Hello and welcome to another edition here of the IU Film Room. This is Tony Adrania at Coach Adrania on Twitter. Uh, this time diving into the IU Princeton game on Wednesday evening. Uh, overall, a 25-point win for IU over a team that's going to compete for their league championship. Um, it's hard to be disappointed in that, uh, although the first half was disappointing. Uh, I put this on Twitter Um IU, they got a little stagnant on the offensive end in the first half, but really uh, their struggle was defensively. They let Princeton dictate the pace. Princeton milked a lot of time on the shot clock and then converted late in the shot clock, limiting IU's possessions, limiting IU's transition game. Um, So really I thought the defense was the issue in the first half more so than offense. Um, And then IU came out and basically just completely controlled the second half. Uh, won it by 22 or 23 points. Um, so what I'm diving into today is some of the defensive woes, which it turns out is mainly on-ball defensive mistakes, uh, how I you clean that up. I'm going to look at Joey Brunk and the excellent performance he had defensively against a guy that was averaging 17 points per game uh, for Princeton. Uh, then we look at some of the baseline out-of-bounds stuff, uh, a couple sets I you ran. And, yeah, so without further ado, we'll dive into it. First thing we're going to look at in this film room is I use defense. Um, and I've got about five clips here of their first half defense that I just thought um, really needed to be shored up and, and was quite frankly, pretty poor. Um, in some of these clips, IU gave up threes, but those three pointers were given up because the on ball defense was terrible. Somebody had to over help. They overextend. And then there was a kick out for a wide open three. Um, so just, Starting here with this play here, we see long closeout, bad closeout from Jerome Hunter on the ball. Two points for Princeton. So this is multiple long closeouts. We see here drive. Now Justin Smith has to help. He's got a long closeout. Now Jerome Hunter has to help. Way too long of a closeout. Leave a D1 shooter wide open. Not going to be good. Another time, we see Demise has to help. Now he's got a long closeout. He doesn't close out under control. It turns into an and one. Right here, Trace pretty much sets a screen on Al Durham here because he doesn't hedge hard enough. He doesn't allow Al Durham to go underneath his hedge and get back in front of the ball handler. So now the ball handler is going to have a straight line drive to the rim because Trace kind of got in Durham's way, almost set a screen on him. Guy gets a layup. And then the last one here in the second half is green, just a little casual. This guy is basically able to do it every once. Trace kind of sets the screen again on green, layup. So that's five different clips there in the first half that Princeton really didn't have any resistance getting to the rim. IU had to overhelp, and that overhelping allowed Princeton to either, A, get a three-point shot or attack a hard closeout and get to the rim. Uh, Not a great defensive performance from IU in the first half. Absolutely no doubt in my mind that Archie Miller went into halftime um, pretty ticked at at the Hoosiers, defensive effort especially, Um, and I don't blame him. As you just saw, uh, way too many straight line drives, guys not closing out under control, and ultimately it just turns into kind of an effort thing, and I know that Archie harps on that. He's talked about how the Hoosiers haven't been as good defensively as he'd hoped. Uh, Well, the second half, they completely turned the tide. Um, They they got down, they guarded, and – it allowed them to extend their lead to over 20 points, um, whereas it was what, two or three at halftime. Um, and so basically what it was, it, like I said, it came down to effort. But as we can see in these couple clips here, these are just IU playing defense in the second half. Guys are down in a the stance. They're guarding. They're moving. Look, at everybody's in a stance here. Everybody's working together as one. Trace is ready to hedge this ball screen. Al Durham's down in his stance. And you see Durham here. He doesn't allow him to reject, keeps the guy in front of him. You can tell he's just being gritty. He's, he's down in his stance. He's ready to guard. Race does a nice job guarding the post, gets a steal. Another clip here. Finnessy's down in his stance. He's guarding. Brunk with a nice hedge, allows Finnessy to get back. Now, notice, Finnessy keeps his man in front of him. This was a bigger big difference from the first half. Finnessy keeps his man in front of him. So what does that do? That allows Justin Smith not to overcommit to the ball handler. And so that Justin Smith, 
I mean, he's at the arc on the catch. Now, if this guy's going to shoot a 30 footer with any sort of consistency, then yeah, maybe you have a little bit more help there. But Justin Smith's exactly where he needs to be on the catch. And ultimately, he's allowed, to, he was able to close out on this guy, takes a tough shot. IU gets a defensive rebound. So those are just a couple clips to show you the difference from the second half effort to the first half, from the first half effort. And at the end of the day, it's really what propelled IU to victory. So last night, I thought Joey Brunk's defense uh, was phenomenal. Uh, Princeton had a big, averaging 17 and 8 or something around there. Uh, I call him number 34 because his last name was tough. Um, but what I really liked about Joey Brunk's defense was that he did his work early. And by doing his work early, I mean this guy wants to catch the ball in the block and he wants to make a move quickly. So he wants to catch it right here on this block. Well, what Joey Brunk is doing – is basically he's creating an arm bar in that guy's back and keeping his feet moving and pushing him off that block with the denial hand on his top shoulder. Now he keeps he creates that arm bar. It, it's a subtle movement, but he's putting all his weight on that guy and just making him move off that block. So it's not a foul. Refs aren't going to call it very often as long as you keep that arm straight and keep your feet moving. So like I said, this guy wants to catch it on the block. Well, look where Joey forces him to catch this. He wants it here. He's way out here. Now, he's not comfortable with the ball out here. IU's got good defenders kind of reaching in there, putting their hands in the cookie jar. And what happens is it's a turnover. So Joey Brunk did a really nice job of forcing him off that block. But that was a trend all night. As soon as this guy's on the ball side, look at Brunk. He creates contact, and he immediately starts pushing. He's pushing him off that block. Again, he wants to catch it here. Look where he ultimately ends up catching this basketball. He's not comfortable with it there. He, he's not sure what to do with it here. Within this play, he ends up uh, throwing it out to one of his teammates. Another time here in the second half. Joey sees he's on the ball side. What does he start doing? He starts pushing. So look where he ends up catching it. Again, he wants to catch it here. He's got to catch it five feet from here. He's not comfortable with it there. He doesn't want to put the ball on the floor a lot. It's not like he's got a bunch of dribble moves that he's going to go blow by Brunk with. So what does he do? He's frustrated now. He settles. Shoots his Tough shot that's not really in his wheelhouse. IU gets the rebound. So really, really impressed with Joey Brunk's defense last night. And I thought he kind of set the tone as the man in the middle for the Hoosiers um, and just probably played his best game as a Hoosier so far. So if you've watched any of my film rooms before, you know that I love diving into IU's baseline out-of-bounds plays. Um, they all start in this 1-4 low set. This was actually the second baseline out-of-bounds play IU ran. Uh, of the day, but I'm going to show you this one first because this is the one that Princeton probably had scouted. It basically is uh, Justin Smith's going to pop up, Jerome Hunter's going to set a screen for him, and then Jerome Hunter's going to receive a screen from Race Thompson to the corner. It's a screen the screener action, a uh, pretty basic play, but IU runs it. Um, so, like I said, Princeton's probably got this one scouted. IU's ran it a few times this season. They switch everything here, they know what's coming. Race kind of slips it. IU doesn't get really much out of it. Uh, which is surprising because they've gotten a ton out of their base on out-of-bounds plays so far this season. This, though, was the first play they ran uh, of the game, base on out-of-bounds, coming right out of a timeout. It's going to start with this exact same action. It's Race Thompson pops. Devontae Green sets a screen for Race Thompson to dive here. So Princeton probably thinks, okay, this is the play we've got scouted. It's screen the screener. Trace is going to go set a screen for Devontae Green, and he's going to the corner. Well, I or Archie Miller did an excellent job here. Just a subtle difference in the play. So you still see Devontae Green go set that screen. But what happens, Trace isn't setting the screen for Devontae now. Devontae is going to set this screen for Trace. Princeton switching everything. It's a late, late switch on to Trace. It ends up in a dunk, a lob for Trace Jackson Davis because Archie threw this little subtlety in there. Princeton thought they knew what was coming. They didn't. And as you see here, it's a lob. Guys late switching. Dunk for Trace Jackson Davis. So another base on out-of-bounds play. Again, it's this four-low set. This one is an isolation for Justin Smith. So what it's going to be is Smith pops to the elbow. Joey Brunk pops out. Ball's thrown to Joey. Then it's thrown to Smith on the elbow. Everybody else clears to the right side with Devontae Green in the corner. And Justin Smith's got a one-on-one -on -one trying to rip and get to his left hand as quick as he can. So we'll see it here. But there's one thing I really want you to watch on this play. So Justin Smith catches. He rips. So Justin Smith is about to go up for his shot right here. Actually, let's rewind it just a tad. So you see Race Thompson. He was on this block. He's supposed to clear out underneath. He does exactly what he's supposed to do. He clears out underneath. 
Look where Ray Thompson is at right here when Justin Smith's about to go up with his shot. He's all the way out on the perimeter. Justin Smith goes up. What does Race do? He gets underneath the hoop. He gets the rebound and tips it in. Race didn't have his best game last night, but little plays like that are going to help IU win some games this season. I really like this little action that IU ran here uh, at the beginning of the second half, and it basically creates a two-man game with Joey Brunk and Devontae Green. So you see Joey Brunk catches it here. Now, Joey Brunk, he's fairly versatile for as big as he is. But what you see here is Devontae Green brings his man really low. And now he's coming off a dribble handoff. So this dribble handoff action, you can see the space that Devontae Green has already separated here. So it's it's just another way to really mask a ball screen between Devontae Green and Joey Brunk. But you see how much space Devontae Green has here. So if Joey Brunk hands this off and his guy doesn't hedge high on Devontae Green, Devontae Green's got way too much space and he's able to create. So this dribble handoff makes Joey Brunk's guy head super high, higher than he'd probably like to, which creates a passing lane and a passing window for Devontae Green to Brunk. And we'll see Devontae Green does a nice job of finding that window. Brunk probably mad at himself for not finishing that one. But still, we see a dribble handoff here. Guy has to hedge high, creates a window for Brunk. He gets two shots. Something that I've really loved to see from IU is that Anytime a team's gone zone against them so far this season, they've been able to absolutely slice and dice it. And that was the exact same case for Princeton last night. So Princeton's in a little matchup zone here. I like what IU does. They overload a side, so they're acting like they're coming back right. This is going to be a dribble handoff for Al Durham. And Trace is going to end up actually screening this outside guy at the zone. But as we take a look at it here, so IU has overloaded this side. They've got one, two. You can barely see them because they're right next to each other. Three. Four guys on this side of the floor. It's exactly what you have to do against a zone defense. You've got a shooter on the other side of the floor that keeps the weak side honest. So what happens is the ball gets thrown into Race Thompson on the baseline. This guy here takes Race. Trace Jackson Davis is probably this guy's responsibility. He turns his head. He has no idea where Chase Jackson Davis is even at. He's ball watching. Trace makes a nice cut. This guy sees it too late. And even if he stepped in the middle there, then you've got Devontae Green wide open in, uh, on the wing here. But really, it just IU slices and dices his zone, gets the ball in the short corner, guy in the middle dives, nice pass, dunk. I want to show you this clip because it was something I noticed during the game, and it just shows that Archie's serious when he talks about attention to detail on the defensive end. Um, he's not playing around, and this clip pretty much proves it. So 8.32 left. We've got Jerome Hunters checking in the game. All right. Checks in, 832, matches up. So we see this play right here. This guy goes up. Watch Jerome Hunter here. Doesn't box out. Just kind of thinks he can get with his athleticism way too late. Now he's kind of lollygagging around. Now he's like, oh, crap, I got to help this guy. What does he do? He helps late. He fouls. Actually ended up being on Trace Jackson Davis, but um, one could argue that was Jerome Hunter's fault. 657 left in the second half. <laughs> Archie pulled him here. So he checked in at 8.32. Within about a minute and a half, he made a couple mistakes in the defensive end with boxing out, bad help, and a foul. And what does that do? He gets pulled. So Archie is dead serious when he talks about attention to detail in the defensive end, and he's not afraid to yank guys. Last clip for this film room, and this was when the game was already decided. I has got a 20-point lead. But it just kind of shows you the element that Devontae Green brings here. He's got a little bit of everything here. It's excitement. It's, uh, oh, crap, he's going to turn it over. Um, and it ultimately ends up in a great play for Green. But the fact that he's able to just create – IU doesn't have anybody else in their team that can create offense like Devontae Green. Last night he was distributing the ball really well. But I want you to see something here that I thought was – even when I was watching it live, I thought for sure this pass was going to Justin Smith as did this guy. I mean, look, he's got his eyes right on Justin Smith. This guy is going to defend that pass. Joey Brunk's right here. Devontae Green dumps it down to him. It's two points for Brunk. I mean, Green's ability to create obviously makes this team better. Um, Archie's even said you got to take the good with the bad sometimes. Yes, he's going to make some crazy plays. He might have a turnover here and there, but this team is definitely better with Devontae Green on the floor. Um, and last night, like I said, he was distributing the ball really well. But well, that's going to do it for this edition of the IU Film Room. Again, the Hoosiers struggled a bit early, especially in the defensive end uh, that we dove into a little bit. 
Um, and then they shorted up um, really the on the ball defense is what created a lot of those defensive miscues. Um, and then things kind of just spiraled from there into long closeouts uh, and then Princeton knocking down some threes off those long closeouts. Uh, but like I said, IU really shorted it up uh, in the second half and made this a 25 point contest. Um, so game wasn't nearly as, as out of hand as it looked. Um, Princeton gave a good fight for the Hoosiers, but Again, just really like what I see out of IU. Their offense has been very, very efficient. The defense was very good in the second half, um, and they got to just continue to that trend. They cannot let their identity be slow starts, though. That's going to cost them in the Big Ten season. Um, but with this edition of the IU Film Room, as always, I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to watch. These videos are a little bit longer, so I uh, really appreciate you. So I'm Tony Adrania. Till next time, folks. Thanks a lot.